Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to be taking a look at all of the latest and greatest updates to Simu Emulator, which have been added to it in the last two to three weeks. These new releases include two publicly available versions, as well as two 1.16.0 work in progress versions, which as many of you are already aware, contains the Vulkan API, which has delivered dramatic performance increases for AMD and Intel GPU units. Users. Now before we get started, there is still a no release date for CMU 1.16.0. I've asked many, many times and they still pretty much have just no idea when it's going to be released. They're working as hard as they can to get everything implemented and get it as stable as possible for as many games as possible. And once it is stable, it will be released to everyone in the public. As usual, CMU releases new versions to everyone every two weeks. So let's get started with everything they have released in the last few few weeks alone and believe me there's a hell of a lot of cool stuff here. Okay so starting things off we're going to take a look at everything that was implemented in 1.15.17. This is already available so if you're using CMU's auto updater all you have to do is simply run CMU and it'll download this version for you. First off, let's start things with some general changes. They changed it so that if you have a no MLC location set, the emulator is going to ask you where your MLC folder is located instead of simply setting it to the default one inside CMU's main folder. This is super, super useful because for lots of people like myself, we use MLC backup folders and save all of our DLCs and updates there. Basically, it just lets you draw from one singular folder which saves an absolute ton of space especially if you have multiple CMU versions installed for whatever reason. Next up, CMU is going to remember the adjusted column widths inside of your games list and it is also going to add a context menu allowing you to show, hide or reset any of the column widths to their default values. Staying on 15.7 and moving on to input, they have added support for GameCube controllers to the input settings list. They have improved the accuracy of the Wiimote and Nunchuck acceleration values. They fixed Wiimote performance when sending a lot of packets, for example Rumble, or when using multiple Wiimotes, and they also fixed a bug where the input settings would stop detecting any pressed buttons on any of these controllers. Again, staying on 1.15.7, the biggest thing by far introduced in this update is the fact that they have added support for the reading and writing of Amiibo register in Info. This means nickname and owner me's. They've added support for reading and writing of Amiibo game specific data, and they also implemented the missing APIs that prevented the Amiibo settings app from booting. All of these new changes mean that for practically every game that uses them, you are now going to be able to use Amiibos. One game which a lot of people have requested Amiibo support for is Super Smash Bros, which, as I said, is now going to have full support for both reading and writing. In the interest of keeping this video as short as possible, let's jump straight over to 1.15.18. This is the latest Patreon release, which as usual will be available to everyone for free this coming Friday. Again, starting things off with the general changes, they have optimized and drastically sped up the boot or loading times of the emulator previously, and especially after just restarting or shutting down and relaunching your PC, it could take between 5 to 10 seconds for CMU to load, whereas now it's pretty much instantaneous as soon as you click the CMU icon. We've also received several games list improvements. First of all, two new grid-based display modes, much, much faster loading times and caching of all the data once you load CMU for the first time. Adding a new game and hitting the refresh icon is going to be much, much faster also. And it also fixes playtime not being correctly tracked. This is gonna be super useful for anybody who loads specific games from either shortcuts, launchers, or batch files. In this version, Version, they have also implemented a far more accurate implementation of the calendar API. This fixes a ton of crashes and softlocks in many games, most prevalent the date dependent softlocks in Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival. Finally, for this 1.15.18 version, they have added a fix for a bug where the rumble preview section of the gamepad selection window would be extremely short if you were selecting and using the Wii U gamepad. 
As I said, all of the changes in both of these versions are going to be available to everyone on the coming Friday. For now though, in the interest of keeping this video as short as possible since there's a ton of information in it, let's move on to all of the changes in the CMU 1.16.0 work in progress versions, which as I said contains the Vulkan API. As I said at the beginning, we still have no release date for these Vulkan version builds. You can, however, download them by simply supporting CMU Emulator over on their Patreon for $5 a month. That's literally all you have to do, simply support them and you will get immediate access to the Vulkan API in CMU. Okay, so starting things off, let's take a look at the Vulkan Work in Progress 13 version. In this release, we got dramatically improved stability in games like The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, Mario Kart 8 and Xenoblade Chronicles, as well as tons and tons of other games. They also implemented more core rendering features, meaning many games, for example Mario Kart 8 and Xenoblade Chronicles X are now rendered much better, with Mario Kart 8 having nearly completely fixed graphics on the Vulkan API, as you can see by the gameplay footage you're watching right now. Work in Progress 13 also gave us some fairly drastic performance improvements, especially so if you're an AMD GPU user. Now if you're an Nvidia user you also got a performance increase, but since Nvidia GPUs are basically OpenGL machines, the Vulkan API is still a tiny bit slower than OpenGL on this release. Moving on to Vulkan Work in Progress 14, which was only just given to us. This includes all the changes in 1.15.18, and in this version, they have introduced the extension VKNV Fill Rectangle. This, if available, is going to emulate the Wii U's rectangle primitives, helping to substantially increase the render quality in tons of games. Next up, we have one of the biggest performance increases we've been given in the work in progress builds so far. This comes from the lessening of the performance impact from the setting full sync at GX2 drawdown. For anybody who's used CMU for any amount of time, you should know that disabling this option dramatically improves your performance. However, in a previous Vulkan builds it was sapping way too much performance and frame rate out of your games thankfully this issue is now fixed and it is expected to be improved even further in future next up they fixed a bug where the wii u message boxes which were implemented i think in 1.15.15 could not be interacted with when you were using a vulcan this was pretty annoying for games like super smash bros ultimate and xenoblade chronicles since because of it you weren't able to skip past any of the notification screens for not being able to connect to online this release also introduced new additional texture format support as well as fixed the R4 G4 texture bug which was happening in tons of games. They have also listed various internal changes and since this has only been released a few hours at time of making this video, I haven't had time to test what these internal changes are, so as soon as I figure any of them out I'll either list them on my discord or I'll make an additional video covering any games that were fixed by these changes. And there we go, there's all of the latest and greatest updates to CMU Emulator we've gotten in the last three weeks alone. There's a hell of a lot of cool stuff in there, so please let me know down in the comment section of this video what your favorite thing that was added in this version was. For me, it's definitely the changes to the reading and writing of Amiibos and also the dramatic boost to performance that AMD GPU users have gotten. So many people in the CMU community have had to suffer with AMD AMD's terrible OpenGL drivers, so it's really, really cool to see this Vulkan backend giving them the performance that they should have been getting on their powerful GPUs from the start. It really sucks when a GPU is being held back by its driver. Thankfully though, emulators like RPCS3, CMU, and even Yuzu have either got Vulkan already implemented or have it in development and just about ready to release. So for all modern GPUs with support for Vulkan, the future is definitely a bright one for your emulator's performance. Now, as usual, if we get any kind of release date for the Vulkan API in its public release form, I will be sure to let you guys know as soon as possible. Before I go, at the end of this video though, 
I want to give another massive thank you to all of my supporters over on Patreon.com. You guys are absolutely amazing, helping me to pay for things like my internet bills, power bills, every single game I use for testing in my videos, and pretty much everything I require for the maintenance of this YouTube channel. So to all of you guys, I want to give a massive, massive thank you. If anybody out there in my community would like to help with the running of BSOD Gaming, please consider heading to the Patreon link down below at either pledging or donating to support. As I always say though guys, these pledges or donations are absolutely not required to get help from here on YouTube or over on my Discord server, but they are massively, massively appreciated, believe me. So to all of my past, present and indeed possible future supporters, thank you guys very, very much. That's going to be the end of this video guys, again thank you very much for watching, have a great day and I will see you all in the next one.